despite the age, it's aged well. Hey guys, this is my review for Spider-Man 2. Admittedly, this took a little while. I actually watched the movie quite some time ago. I kind of just wanted to reflect upon it. Spider-Man 2 is definitely a different movie from the first one. The campiness of the first one has toned down. Um, there's a lot more references to Sam Raimi's earlier works, especially The Evil Dead. That certain scene that most people know is pretty much the most PG-13 thing you could think of of an Evil Dead sort of remake. However, in terms of a Spider-Man story, it is different from the first film because Spider-Man actually isn't in it that much. This is much more focused on Peter Parker and the personal kind of conflict within himself and just the will to be Spider-Man, whether he should be or shouldn't be Spider-Man anymore, what matters in his life. The conflictions between trying to be a university student and trying to be a self-sustaining person as well as being a superhero. And admittedly, everything about this film is so much better. While I loved William Defoe as the Green Goblin, he was an absolutely cartoon character. Alfred Maloney, I think that's how you say his name, as Doc Ock though, is much, much better. He's a much more grounded villain. He's kind of driven by his own personal regret, his failures, but also his obsession as a scientist and where his feelings of trying to better the world are actually being morally like, corrupted by that of the arms. Like the pull computer chip thingy on the arms is kind of odd. But admittedly, the CG for those arms stands up. Now some of it was practical obviously for close-up stuff, but it really holds up pretty well. Admittedly, there's one part where he kind of looks like Keanu Reeves and the battle in the bell tower, but otherwise, this is some of the best CG in a series. Spider-Man still kind of moves a little fluid, like too fluid at times. It definitely was picked up. However, the campy fighting style of the first one is replaced. There's a lot more CG fights between the two and it does hold up. That fight on the tower especially is a fantastic fight scene. The fight on the train is still an impressive fight scene, even though at one point Spider-Man's holding onto one of the bars and he loops around it, but there's absolutely no way he could do it without smashing the window on the inside. But everything about this movie is better, except for Mary Jane Watson. Mary Jane Watson in the first one was kind of okay, and I liked how the first film ended. However, in this one, she's a bitch. She's pretty much goading Peter the whole time, even though she's supposedly getting married to J.J. Jameson's son. She's an absolute bitch in this, and just a terrible character. Just a fucking awful person, a human being. Every sort of moment that might be interesting between the two of them for their relationship is ruined by everything that comes out of her mouth. Especially at the end, when Peter runs over to stop the wall from falling on her, but it looks like he's not going to be able to hold it up. And she sees who he is. He's like, oh, what a way to ruin a scene. It's definitely evident that Sam Raimi had a problem with women characters in this series. It's especially evident in this film where he has so many of them screaming or running around, especially the one who goes left, right, and then runs right up to the camera and goes, ah! While those are some negative points to it, I still really like the personal kind of conflict with Spider-Man and Peter Parker. There's a lot of really good homages to the comic panels. And in the end, I actually do still feel this is the best movie. Is it my favorite in the series? Actually, kind of not. I don't know why that is. I didn't really have a big woohoo about it when I was a kid. I think it was because it was a different superhero movie. Because of how little Spider-Man was in the film. But this is a personal reflection of Peter Parker. And I have to appreciate the movie for that. It is definitely the best one in the series still. The best craft, it has the best story, has the best action. And it's unfortunate because after this we're going downhill, but it's definitely evident that Spider-Man 2 really held a precedent for superhero movies up until The Dark Knight and Iron Man. Which, so that's like a four year run that this movie really was king key. Because everything afterwards was garbage really. There was a lot of so-so eh, Marvel movies and whatnot that came out. So in the end, my final rating for Spider-Man 2 is a 5 out of 7. It is a great movie. It has some issues. It definitely has some issues still. Nowhere near as bad as the original Spider-Man and nowhere near as bad as Spider-Man 3. 
it has aged well in some aspects, it has aged badly in others, but in terms of an actually entertaining superhero movie, it is pretty good. I do enjoy it. And I definitely see why everyone was a woo -ba -ba about it. I kind of wish I'd had that more of a mentality when I was a kid. Anyways, that leaves only one more until it's done. So Spider-Man 3, I'll be watching that pretty soon. So hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Not good to save us, run it away, on the wings of an eagle, watch it off my way, whoa, whoa, yeah, oh, oh.